हेलो एवरी वन टूडे विल डिस्कस अबाउट विजन आई ए एस साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी पी टी थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव ओके क्विकली वील सी द वॉट आर द टॉपिक्स विच आर बीन मैंशन ह्योर फर्स्ट वन बायो टेक्नोलॉजी नेक्स्ट आई टी एंड कंप्यूटर नेक्स्ट स्पेस टेक्नोलॉजी एंड हेल्थ नेक्स्ट अल्टरनेटिव एनर्जी देन डिफेंस नेक्स्ट अवार्ड्स एंड प्राइजेस एंड सम मिसेलेनियस टॉपिक्स ओके लेट अस स्टार्ट द डिस्कशन विथ बायो टेक्नोलॉजी फर्स्ट वन जीनोम एडिटिंग ओके इंडियन रिसर्च हेज डेवलप द फर्स्ट एवर लो पंजेंट मस्टर्ड बेस्ड ऑन जीनोम एडिटिंग ओके A new mustard variety is less pungent as it has a lesser quantity of glucosinolate at par with the canola quality limit. High glucosinolate causes the goiter and internal organ abnorm- abnormalities in livestock, but it contains lesser qual- quantity of the glucosinolate. It is produced. produced through the gene editing of the varuna a high yielding indian monster variety using the crispr or cas9 gene editing technology it protects the plants from invading pathogens and animals indian monster contains 120 to 130 ppm of the glucosinolates we'll see about genome editing It is a method of altering the DNA of organisms, including plants, bacteria, animals. Editing can lead to changes in physical traits like eye color, mitigating diseases like risk. And it uses site-directed nucleus (sDNS) to make changes that may may be either a small deletion or a sub- substitution or the addition number of the nucleotides. okay nucleotides sdn refers to the it's a practice of cleaving okay it's a practice of cleaving dna strands affect the subsequent genome editing okay it's depend upon the nature of edit the process is divided into three categories sdn1 sdn2 and sdn3 both sdn1 and do not involve alien genetic material and the end result is indistinguishable from conventionally bred crop varieties on other hand sdn3 process involves the genes of foreign origin one of the application of crispr is clustered regularly interspaced short palindrome repeat repeaters one of the application used is crispr technology another genome editing techniques including the zinc finger nucleus and transcription activator like the effector nucleus telens next we'll see the topic gene drive technology gdt applications based on the gene drive technology have shown promising reductions in mosquito populations by making them produce sterile offspring okay we'll see about this gene drive technology it's a type of genetic engineer technique that modifies the genes to alter tens mendelian inheritance mendelian inheritance refers to the oh, it's a certain pattern of how traits are passed from parents to offspring in gene drive there are three components first one gene cas9 enzyme and crispr next genome sequencing scientists have successfully uh, sequenced the y chromosome using the long read genome sequencing techniques we'll see about genome sequencing it's a method of figuring out order of dna nucleotides or a base in a genome that is the order of adenine cytosine guanine thymine and that make up an organism's dna 
genome is an organism it's a complete set of dna and it includes all chromosomes which houses dna and genes apart from long read technique a short read technique is also used for genome sequencing in short read sequencing the genome is broken into small fragments usually uh, 50 to 300 bases before being sequenced and in long read sequencing this dna is fragmented and tagged for sequencing to keep track of re keep track of each fragment and followed by local assembly aerial metagenomics it is a study of genetic composition of microbial samples collected from air chromosomes are thread like structure made up of protein and a single nucleo sorry single molecule of dna carry the genomic information from cell to cell and in plants and animals it resides in the nucleus of cells human have a 22 pair of numbered chromosomes and one pair of sex chromosome and for a total of 46 we'll see about this y chromosome it is a last human chromosome to be sequenced end to end okay telomeres cap and protect the end of the chromosome male determining because it bears sry genes sex sex determining region y has a lot of junk dna sequence don't contribute to traits individual having y chromosomes are related to single bearing ancestor as it is passed down from the male parent to male offspring okay next we'll see the topic three baby parent recently in uk a baby has been born using three people's dna with the help of mitochondrial donation treatment mdt procedure we'll see what is this mdp pro mdt procedure it involves conceiving a child from ivf in vitro fertilization using genetic material of the parents and mitochondrial material of the donor donor disease mitochondria are replaced by healthy mitochondria in this disease mitochondria are replaced by the healthy my healthy mitochondria in order to avoid a transfer of mitochondrial diseases from mother to offspring done either before or after ivf of the egg it is also known as mitochondrial replacement therapy mrt and a three parent babies process data name is used to involvement of three persons in this mechanism embryo from the biological parents is combined with the mitochondria from the donor's egg the most common techniques are the maternal spindle transfer mst technique and the pro nuclear transfer technique in both the techniques egg, eggs are embryos are created using the nuclear genetic material and healthy donated mitochondria next will this next we'll see the topic stem cells recently it was in news a team of scientists have created the first synthetic human embryo like structure in the world using the stem cells we we'll see about their discovery the synthetic embryos are resemble natural embryos in the earlier stages of the human development and their lack of beating heart are a beginning of the brain but they contain cells that would give rise to the placenta yolk sac benefits of the synthetic embryos it helps in understanding the impact of genetic disorders and uh, in biological reasons behind recurrent miscarriages and genetic ep- epigenetic and environmental effects on the development embryo and it helps in understanding the black box of human development the period before the pregnancy progress can be detected on a scan we'll see a uh, briefly about stem cell a cell with unique ability to 
develop into a specialized cell types in the body and it provide new cells for the body as it grows and replace specialized cells that are damaged or lost two unique properties it has one can divide over and over again produce new cells one can divide over and over and produce the new cells and second as they divide they can change into the other types of cells that make up the body regenerative medicine research rm research in revolves the or revolves around the use of stem cells like embryon embryonic adult and induced and induced pluripotent stem cells rm regenerative medicine it is a process of regenerating human cells tissues or organ to restore or establish a normal function we will see the applications of stem cells we will see the applications of stem cells it helps in understanding the nature of diseases and uh, it helps in stem cell therapy introducing the new stem cells into a damaged tissue and uh, it could be autologous transplantation uses the patient's own stem cells and in allogeneic transplantation it uses the stem cells from the donor donor it will discuss the topic diverse epigenetic epidemiology partnership called deep okay csir center for cellular and My molecular biology ccmb is collaborating with the research groups across the world on the diverse epigenetic epidemiology partnership deep project we'll see what is this epigenetic epidemiology it is a part of epidemiology epidemiology is a pattern and factor that related to health and disease in populations epigenetics is a study of how your behaviors and environment can cause changes that affect the way you the way your genes work unlike genetic uh, changes unlike genetic changes epigenetic changes are irreversible and do not change the dna sequences but they can change how body reads dna sequence one common epigenetic modification is dna methylation and it involves the addition of methyl group to the dna molecule and a high level of dna methylation leads to the gene silencing we'll see about the project it is a five year project led by the researchers at the university of bristol london and the csir ccmb in india crsir it is a national r&d center to promote the scientific and industrial and the economic growth rationally is the much of population health research conducted till date has drawn heavily on the data collected from the people of white europeans origins many global communities are under represented in health studies Okay, we will see the procedure genetic genomic database sorry data sets in underrepresented populations across africa asia and north south american continents it will analyze the dna methylation data and health related measures from people around the world and identifying the causes and mechanisms of these health outcomes significance of this project is it helps in understanding the genetics behind the non communicable diseases ncds in diverse population next we'll see the topic it and computer in this national quantum mission recently the first meeting of mission governing board mgb of national quantum mission nqm discussed the implementation strategy and timelines of timelines of nqm as well as 
the formation of mission coordination cell we'll see about this uh, mission coordination cell this mcc will be set up as a coordinating agency for the nqm and uh, will work in co coordination with the mission secretariat and the department of science and technology dst it will function under the overall supervision and guidelines guidance of the mission technology research council next uh, nqm was approved by cabinet is in 2023 at a total cost of about 6000 crores qubit it is just like binary bit 0 and 1 is the basic unit of information in classical classical computing a qubit is the basic unit information in quantum computing about this mission its aim is to uh, seed nurture and scale up scientific and industrial r&d and it is implementing agencies are the department of science and technology and the ministry of science and technology the mission dur duration is 2023 to 24 to 2030 to 2031 targets to developing intermediate scale quantum computers with a range of 50 to 1000 physical qubits and developing the satellite based secure quantum communications between ground station over a range 2000 km within india and with other countries okay we'll see about uh, quantum technology it harnesses the laws of quantum physics which describes the behavior of matter and energy at the atomic and subatomic level it is the dif it is different from classical physics in which object exists in one place at one time example binary physical state 1 and 0 the quantum computers are based on the principle like superposition and entanglement okay we'll see the difference between quantum computing and the classical computing quantum computing has a high error rates as they are highly susceptible to noise such as electromagnetic signals here low error rates and can operate at room temperature it calculates with qubits representing 0 and 1 simultaneously and this side calculates with the transistors which can represent either 0 or 1 and this power increases exponentially in proportion to the number of qubits and in this classical computing power increases in a 1 is to 1 relationship with the number of transistors and it is well suited for task like uh, optimization problems and data analysis and uh, simulations and this side best suited for most everyday processing task we'll see the applications of quantum technology magnetometers for uh, atomic systems it is used to measuring the strength and direction of the magnetic field and it uses in the atomic clocks for a precision timing communication and navigation and design and the synthesis of quantum material such as the superconductors etc and the quantum technology is also uses in the single photon sources or a detectors and the entangled photon sources for a quantum communication sensing and meteorological applications for example quantum random number generation or ng Okay next we'll discuss about artificial intelligence regulation and application Recently the world first ever AI safety summit was held at Bletchley Park in London and it adopted a Bletchley declaration at to regulate the AI We'll see about Bletchley declaration the world first agreement on artificial intelligence safety which pledge the to work together to assess the risk associated with AI and it is signed by the 28 countries and the european union india is also a part of it the regulator initiatives are the european union ai act as the world first comprehensive in law comprehensive ai law the new delhi declaration adopted by the global partnership on artificial intelligence it is a multi stakeholder initiative 
Its aim is to bridge the gap between theory and the practice on AI by supporting the cutting edge research and applied activities on the AI related priorities. And next, uh, Hiroshima AI process. It will be established through a G7 working group in a co cooperation with the OECD and GPI. Next, we will see about artificial intelligence. It is the ability of machine to perform tasks that would normally require the human intelligence such as learning, problem solving and decision making. It has a different dimensions such as first one generative AI. It uses deep learning models like Opens AI, Chat GPT, Google Spot, Sora, Kritrim India's AI model to create a high quality content like text and speech. Generative AI leverages the advanced natural language processing and in GPT a generative pre-trained transformers belongs to the family of large language models. Okay, this LLM are the machine learning model based on the neural networks that can re reorganize, sorry, recognize, summarize, translate, predict and generate the content using very large database. Graphical processing units also play a role in this. Next, multimodal AI. In this, it combines the power of multiple inputs to solve a complex task such as text to speech etc and the third one frontier ai a highly capable general purpose ai models that can perform wide variety of tasks we'll see the difference between machine learning ml and the deep learning machine learning is a ai methodology not not all ml is deep learning deep learning is a advanced ml methodology and all deep learning is ml that is machine learning and problem solving approaches in this solve problems through the statistics and mathematics in deep learning it combines the statics and mathematics with the neural network architecture in machine learning training is needed need to manually select and extract the features from raw data and assign weights to trial and ml model and here it's able to self learn by using the feedback from known errors and machine learning is a less complex and has a low data volume and deep learning is the more complex with a very high data volume okay next next we'll discuss about deep fakes recently a union government has issued an advisory to the social media intermediaries to identify misinformation and deep fakes deep fakes which refers to the video image that has been edited using an algorithm to replace a person in the original video or image with someone else in a way that makes the video look authentic DFA can be a imitation of a face, body, sound, speech, environment or any other personal information manipulated to create a create an impersonation and it uses a form of artificial intelligence called deep learning to make images to images of fake events events that haven't happened ever. Deep learning is a mechanism learning a subset using artificial neural networks inspired by the human brain to learn from the large data sets. We will see the mechanism. It uses the technology of, of deep learning, AI and photoshopping to create images of events, GANs, generative adversarial networks. A class of mechanical learning or interplay to create and videos create the videos this GANs consist of the generators and the discriminators generators take the initial data set to create a new image 
and then discriminator evaluates the content for realism and the and does further refinement next we'll see the topic web 3.0 recently report titled unlocking the web 3 potential india journey from talent exporter to a product powerhouse was released premus partners that is private organizations we'll see highlights of this report in 2022 india ranked third worldwide india held 11 percent of the global web 3 developed pool and web sector web 3 sector is projected to create 2.2 million direct jobs in india in next de next decades we'll see about web 3 web 3 provides a version of the web where users have a financial stake and more control over the web communities and they belong to web 1 uh, web 1 also called the static web enabled easy access to information web 2 built on the advancement in web technologies which enable the interactive platforms example facebook and it is centralized in nature and released heavily on intermediaries web 3 enables the peer to peer transactions and interaction without intermediaries okay and it includes the cryptocurrencies non fungible tokens decentralized autonomous organization and it provides more security of data in comparison to the web 1 and web 2 and it also enables the people to control their own data and uh, blockchain based social network it is and it is operated by the users collectively rather than a corporation web 4.0 it is also known as symbiotic web which will aim to the interaction between the humans and the mechanisms in symbiosis next web 5.0 features include the control over identity and a decentralized platform for storing the data and a free flowing environment for creators to develop decentralized applications next we'll discuss about crypto mining recently bhutan and singapore based Biddeer have announced the plans to raise 500 million to set up a crypto mining operations in the Himalayan that is free of carbon. We'll see about crypto mining. It is a process of generating new coins and verify a process new transactions and it involves a vast decentralized network of computers which verify and secure the block blockchains uh, fundamental to proof of work cryptocurrency networks like bitcoin the proof of work and proof of stakes uses the algorithm to valid cryptocurrency the main difference between pow and pos is how they choose the how they choose and qualify the users to add transactions proof of work and proof of stakes that is pow and pos are protocols that intended to validate the transactions and keep the blockchain network decentralized and secure PAW is a mechanism of Bitcoin which uses to regulate the creation of blocks and the integrity of the network through the process of mining. In POS, it is an alternative con consensus mechanism that delegates the control of the network to the owners of, of a given token. Next, we'll see markets in crypto assets, MICA recently a european parliament has passed the markets in crypto assets legislation to regulate the crypto industry 
we'll see about markets in crypto assets that is mica which established a legal framework for crypto asset service which provides a, which provides providers as well as consumer protection this legal framework for crypto asset service providers as well as consumer protection and it is focused on the categories of the crypto assets which are currently out of the scope of existing regulations and it has a sub categorization of crypto assets electronic money tokens and asset refer referenced the tokens asset reference tokens erts and utility tokens utis and it doesn't apply to non fungible tokens nfts and decentralized finance and a central bank digital currencies this dfi is an emerging model for organizing and enabling cryptocurrency based transaction and exchanges the financial services we'll see about crypto asset it is a digital representation of a value of or a rights which may be a transferred and a stored electronically it uses the it uses distributed ledger technology or a similar technology crypto assets has a different types of tokens stable coin security tokens asset tokens utility tokens and non fungible tokens nft in stable coin values are fixed and often they are pegged to a currency such as dollar us dollar and in security tokens indicate that the owner possesses a stake in some viral world asset or enterprise next in asset tokens represent a real world assets such as gold or real estate in utility tokens users with a special access special access to a product service or offer next uh, in non fungible tokens it is in block blockchain based tokens that each represent a unique asset like a piece of art digit content or media next, next we'll see wifi 7 technology recently us based company qualcom suggested that india should adopt the newest wifi technology this wifi 7 wireless fidelity it is the next generation of wifi standard and it is based on the ieee 802.11 be extremely high throughput this i i triple e is the institute of electrical and electronic engineers is the world's largest technology technical professional organization we'll see key features of this wifi 7 backward compatibility low latency and multi link operation and speed and capacity and it is faster than wifi 6 this wifi uses radio waves which needs three mediums base station root sorry router and accessing devices like a phone and laptop okay we will next discuss about facial recognition technology Recently a Ministry of Communication has developed an AI based facial recognition tool that is artificial intelligence and facial recognition powered solution for telecom sim subscriber verification that is ASTR we'll see about this ASTR it is launched under under the Sanchar Sathi initiative and it is a AI powered tool to identify sims issued using the fraudulent documents We'll see about the Sanchar Sathi initiative. This initiative helps the citizens to know the mobile connections issued in their name, and uh, report fraudulent etc. And it is developed under the sorry, it is developed by Department of Tele Telecommunications. Param Siddhi supercomputer was used for the large data processing. Param Siddhi supercomputer used for large data processing and this uh, astr use the conventional 
sorry convolution ne neural network it uses the convolution neural network cnn modules we'll see about this facial recognition technology it is the way of identifying or confirming an individual's identity using their face okay and next uh, it can be used to identify people in photos videos or in real time computer algorithms map unique facial landmarks which is unique and such as the shape of cheekbones or contours of lips etc and convert these into a numerical code numerical code termed a face print it converts these into a numerical code termed as a face print next we'll see about supercomputers uh, India's AI supercomputer Airavat has been ranked 75th in the top 500 global supercomputer list. We'll see about this AI, sorry, Airavat. It is, Airavat is installed at the Center for Developing Advanced Computing in Pune, Maharashtra. It is installed in Pune, Maharashtra. It is India's largest and a fastest AI supercomputer system with a speed of 13,000 170 teraflops and works on the operating system Ubuntu 20.4.2 LTS. It is installed under the National Program on Artificial Intelligence that is NPAI. This NPA is an umbrella program by the committee for uh, leveraging transformative technology to foster inclusion, innovation and adoption for social impacts in AI. Supercomputer is a high performance computing system that delivers exceptional processing power and computational capacity as compared to the general purpose computer. See, it delivers the exceptional processing power and computational capacity as compared to the general purpose computer. And its performance is based, based in floating point operating operations per second. Its performance is measured in the floating point operation per second that is flops instead of millions instruction per second mips okay next india's other three supercomputers are in the top 500 list such as param siddhi ai and pratayush and mihir india's first supercomputer was param 8000 set up in 1991 param shivai was the first supercomputer assembled in indigenously in 2019 under the national supercomputing mission called nsm national supercomputing mission it is launched in 2015 its goal is to connect the r d institutions and academic institutions using the supercomputer grid with more than 70 high performance computing facilities and uh, a national knowledge network it is a national knowledge network. These supercomputers will be based on it will be network based based on network on the national supercomputing grid over the NKN. The supercomputers will be uh, network networked on the national supercomputing grid over the NKN and it is a uh, jointly steered by the uh, development uh, Department of Science and Technology and the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology METI. It is implemented by the Center, sorry, Center for Development of Advanced Computing (CDAC) and Inst Indian Institute of the Science (IISC) Bangalore. We'll see the applications of supercomputer. Uh, it is used in cutting edge research, data intensity and uh, computation heavy scientific and engineering purpose. And it is used in the weather forecasting and it also used in health and medicine. Next, it is used in the aerospace engineering and uh, energy exploration. And it also used in the defense and military. Uh, next, we will see 5G ecosystem. Recently, it was in news. Uh, Telecom Regulatory Authority of India released the consultation paper on digital transformation through 5G ecosystem. This 5G is a global wireless standard after the 1G, 2G, 3G and 4G networks. 
it deliver high de higher multi gbps peak data speeds ultra low latency and more reliability massive network massive network capacity increased availability and uniform user experience to users private 5g also known as the capa captive non public network cnpn this private 5g is a network that is set up of solely for a firm's own use and is is a closed user group it is a closed user group it's essentially a local area network that uses 3gpp based on network spectrum and benefits of this 5g private 5g is it improved speeds enhanced data security control latency and customization it has a various applications like uh, enhanced grid management and robotic surgeries and drones we'll see some government initiatives to the of uh, facilitate 5g service 5g test bed for the startups and uh, mem msmes and uh, the initiative is bharat net connecting rural india on optical fiber and next initiative is 5g high level forum fiberization 66 generation mobile network it is the successor of 5g and it is ability to use high frequencies so that is 6 gigahertz to 6 gigahertz and 95 gigahertz to 3 terahertz with a greater speed up to 1000 gbps and lower latency 1 million second and significance are it support the high performance computing and edge computing technology convergence etc and the department of Tele telecommunication launched the bharat 6g alliance b6ga it is launched by telecommunication department of telecommunication b6ga is a collaborative platform comprising public and private companies both public and private companies academic research institutions and standard development organization next we'll see free space optical communication fsoc alphabet under project terra is currently deploying their light beam internet technology in india africa etc project terra utilizes the free space optical communication we'll see about this fsoc free space optical communication it is an outdoor optical wireless communication okay and uh, it is a short distance wc is called light fidelity and life it uses light within visible light spectrum to invisible light spectrum to transmit transmit data to transmit the data and this life it works based on the vlsc visible light communication principle then vlsc can transmit large amounts of large amounts of data faster than the bluetooth it is faster than the bluetooth and it has no electromagnetic interface uh lvoc line of sight technology and data voice video communication is achieved with a maximum 10 gbps of data rate by full duplex bi directional connectivity they have given your comparison between lifi and wifi this lifi is uh, speed is greater than 1 gbps they are around 150 mbps medium of data transfer is it uses light as a carrier and it it uses a radio spectrum and spectrum range is here wide spectrum here having less than spectrum range than vlsc vlc its cost is cheaper here its cost wifi cost is expensive and network topology is here point to point here also point to point and operate operating frequency is hundreds of terahertz here 2.4 gigahertz uh, advantages of free space optical communications or it is cost effective and a quick deployable and can transmit data at high speed and applications in uh, military applications last mile access telecommunication and computer networking there are some challenges also signal reliability is compressed by the compressed by conditions like uh, fog and haze and interruption like uh, birds flying in front of the signal 
and requires better mirror control and mitigate motion detection capabilities. Earlier, Alphabet tried to deliver internet through the project loan utilizing the stratosphere balloons for the internet uh, connectivity and uh, Starlink satellites have also been deployed by the sorry developed by SpaceX. Starlink satellites are developed by SpaceX to provide internet to remote connections. Next, organic light emitting diodes OLED. Recent year researchers at uh, the University of Chicago have developed an OLED material. Uh, this OLED is a flat light emitting technology. It is a flat light emitting technology made by placing a series of organic thin films between two conductors. When an electric current is applied, a bright light is emitted. It displays OLED displays can be a fabricated on flexible plastic substrates and uh, it is a roll of displays embedded in a clothing can be made using OLEDs and OLEDs are transparent displays are possible using the OLEDs and AMO, AMO LED active matrix organic light emitting diodes and a super AMO LED are display display technologies used in a mobile device and televisions we'll see the different uh, display technology and their comparison lcd liquid crystal display oled and mled in lcd a pixel type is a backlit display here self massive display and here also self display massive and led makeup material it is in organic led backlight here organic LED this is inorganic LED uh, brightness is high in LCD and low in OLED and here very high again in MLED and lifespan is long short and very long responsive time is slow medium and fast we'll see other important things which were in news metaverse it is a 3D enabled virtual reality space and it provides a digital experience as an alternative to a or a replica of the real world and it allows the people to have a life life like a experience online. Uh, the building blocks of metaverses are in four layers infrastructure layer, virtualization, engine layer and interface access layer and user experience and use case layer. In infrastructure layer, it enables the device and connects them to a network, connect to a network and delivers content. In virtualization engine layer, it provides the computational and programming platform. In interface access layer, it helps the user to accessing the metaverse. And using experience and use cases layer, creation, save, trading and storage. Next, we'll see uh, Bharos, a made in India mobile operating system developed by the IIT Madras. It is developed under the project funded by the Department of Science and Technology. It comes with the no default apps. This means that users are not forced to use apps that they may not be uh, familiar with or uh, that may, may that may not trust. It offers uh, native over the air nota updated that can help to keep the device secure and it provides access to trusted apps from the recognition specific private app store pass private app store service pass next a subscriber identification module sim cards this this sim card is a microchip that identifies the subscriber to on a given network and it is mandatory for a mobile phone to connect uh, any network a network should allow network should follow the global system for mobile communication gsm standards and other functions are to store the information and about owner id number international mobile subscriber identity etc uh, latest versions of sim is e sim e sim is an embedded sim essentially a same hardware 
regular sim card chip but now a permanently embedded part of the motherboard it is now permanently embedded part of the motherboard of a watch or a smartphone just like traditional sim card and eSIM also function the same way acting as a unique identifier for telecom operators and it is established is established in 2012 okay and uh, its ability to store the multiple sim profiles eSIM also means one can switch between profiles easily we'll see about gatekeepers six big tech companies namely apple amazon alphabet bytance meta microsoft were named as a gatekeepers by the eu that is european union gatekeepers are the companies that companies to face the highest level of scrutiny under the digital makers act dma of the eu maya operating system os it's amid increasing cyber and malware attacks on defense as well as critical infrastructure ministry of defense to re replace the windows os with maya os a new os is based on an open source platform ubuntu like a property software everyone has the freedom to edit modify and reuse the open source code uh, in addition to that an endpoint detection and protection system chakra vyuham is also being installed in these systems next we'll see wireless vibrant sensor uh, israel defense force is using the wireless vibrant sensor to identify underground tunnels israel is using this uh, wireless vibration sensor to identify underground tunnels and this wireless vibration sensor sends data to your system with the internet of things that is with the iot technology iot is a network of interrelated uh, device that connect and exchange the data with other devices it captures the vibration data with the help of sensing compute components like a uh, accelerometers accelerometer is used in detection of car crash or a collision and detection of accidental free fall of laptops next we'll see about space technology chandrayaan 3 recently a chandrayaan 3 was successfully conducted from the satish uh, satish dhawan space center stsc in sri harikota we'll see about this chandrayaan 3 the launch vehicle was the gslv mk3 that is synchronous satellite launch vehicle mk3 uh, indigenous payloads are the land module propulsion module and rover the objective of the chandrayaan 3 is threes are objectives of this chandrayaan 3 is demonstration of the safe and soft la landing on the lunar surface then demonstration of the rover uh, rowing on the moon and conducted in situ scientific experiments these are the three objectives of this chandrayaan 3 then successfully underwent a hope experiment this raises a hope for the future sample return missions we'll see the key findings of this chandrayaan 3 the temperature cast payload recorded 70 degrees celsius centigrade temperature and it was believed that the temperature could be around 22 to 30 degrees celsius centigrade then elements on the moon it is found uh, the presence of sulfur on the lunar surface near the south pole and other elements like aluminum calcium iron chromium etc were also detected and then uh, thin plasma langmuir pro find that there is a thin film sorry thin plasma on the surface of the moon then natural seismic activity ilsa payload indicates a possibility of quake on the moon then crater chandrayaan 3 rover identified 4 meter diameter crater on the moon surface these are the important points and also remember recent lunar missions from other countries south korea dhanuri mission japan's 
Hakuta R mission, Russia's Luna 25, USA's Arknis second, and Israel's Beret Sheet Beret second. And lunar polar exploration, Lupex is a joint mission of JAXA and Is ISRO. Next, we'll see Chandrayaan soft landing. Chandrayaan three lander accomplished a soft landing on the moon south poles. Then Shiv Shakti point is the spot where the Vikram lander made a soft landing. Then crashing point of Chandrayaan two lander would be known as Tiranga point. Chandrayaan two landing is uh, Tiranga point two. This Chandrayaan three point landing is called Shiv Shakti point. Shiv Shakti. In August twenty three, the day Vikram three lander touched the touched down the lunar surface would be celebrated as a National Space Day. August twenty three celebrated as a National twenty National Space Day. August twenty three celebrated National Space Day, and it became world first mission to soft landing near the lunar south pole. And fourth country to India is the fourth country to soft land on moon after U.S., Russia, and China. Recently, Japan became the fifth country to land its uh, smart land of a uh, investigating moon, slim on Earth. Slim on moon. Sorry. Next, we'll see Aditya L one. Recently, ISRO has successfully placed India's first base, space-based observatory. Class Solar Mission in Hollow Orbit at Langridge Point L1 to study the Sun. It is related to Sun. Aditya L1 is related to Sun. Okay, and we'll see about Aditya L1. The launch vehicle was the PSLV C57, and scientific objective of this uh, Aditya L1 to study of uh, solar upper atmosphere, chromosphere, and corona dynamics, and study of chromospheric and coronal heating physics of the partially ionized plasma and initiation of the coronal mass ejection and solar flares and uh, and it is to observe the in situ particle and plasma environment next to study the drivers of the space weather origin composition and dynamics of the solar wind then aditya l1 carries the seven payloads Five by ISRO and two by Indian Academic Institutes. It's a remote sensing payloads. It has remote sensing payloads, visible emission line, coronagraph, solar ultraviolet imaging, solar low energy X-ray spectrometer, then uh, high energy L1 orbiting X-ray spectrometer, then in situ payloads, Aditya Solar Wind Particle Experiment. Then plasma analyzer package for Aditya. Then advanced triaxial high resolution digital magnetometers. Magnetometers. Uniqueness of this mission is first time specially resolved the solar disk in the in the near of UV band and onboard intelligence to detect CMEs and a solar flares for optimal ob observation and data volume. Then directional and energy anisotropy of solar wind using the multi-directional observation. We'll see about this Langridge points. These points are the position in space where a small object tends to stay. The gravitational pull of the two large bodies equals in the near central centripetal force. For two body gravitational systems, there are total five Langridge points. Langridge points denoted as L1, L2, L3, L4, and L5. And of these five Langridge points, three L1, L2, L3 are the unstable, and L4, L5 are the stable. Uh, significance of this Langridge points are space spacecraft remain in the in these positions with red reduced fuel consumption. I Main uh, significance is it reduces the fuel consumption. And L1 gives the advantage of continuous observation of the sun. Other key informations are NASA, ESS Joint Solar and Helis Heliospheric Observatory Satellite, SOHO. 
mission is placed near near the L1 point while NASA's James Webb Space Technology is placed around L2. Other solar missions from different countries, Parker Solar Probe, NASA Solar and Hellespheric Observatory, European Space Agencies, it is Europeans, then Kafu First One Solar Probe, it is by China. Next we will see about Gaganyan mission. Recently, names of the astronauts have been announced for the Gaganyan mission. Uh, Gaganyan's first flight test vehicle about mission was successfully executed. Flight simulated the abort condition during the ascent trajectory and this abort mission flight test vehicle abort mission TVD1 is a single stage liquid rocket. It is a single stage liquid rocket. This uh, being um, mission Gaganyan envisages the demonstration of human spacecraft space flight capability and crew of three members to an orbit 400 kilometer for a three days three day mission will be launched it is a three day mission then launch vehicles are the lvm3 then consist of solid stage liquid and cryogenic stage guganyan national advisory council has been created the ISRO indigenously developed the environmental control and life support system. Then only US, Russia, China have managed to send manned mission to outer space. We will see about this Gaganyan program. A design for all systems and subsystems has been completed. Then human rated L, L110 10G Vikas engine. L110G Vikas engine has been successfully tested recently and this Vikas an acronym for Vikram Ambalal Sarabhai engine is a family of liquid fueled rocket engines and completed service module propulsion system test also then ISRO will carry out a te test flight with the robot Vyomitra. Next, we will see navigation with the Indian consultation NAVIC. Chip sets for the navigation with Indian consultation NAVIC are being manufactured by the India by an Indian company for the first time. First time they are manufacturing. We will see more about this. It is supported by Ministry of Science and Technology and Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. These are necessary to make the Navigate gadget compatible with Navic. Also, NVS 1 has been launched. It is the first of the India's first of the India's second generation satellite envisaged for the NVEC service. This Navic is an independent standalone navigation satellite system it is developed by the isro and satellite three satellites are the geostationary orbit and four satellites are placed in inclined geosynchronous orbit three in geostationary orbit and four are placed in the inclined geosynchronous orbit and it covers the uh, whole of India's landmass and up to 1500 kilometer from the boundaries earlier it was on also known as the Indian Regional Navigation Satellite System RNSS it offers two services standard position service and restricted service for strategic users and the standard position service is for civilian users need for this navic is to is a remote for defense on foreign foreign satellite system EVSS global foreign system GPS or strategic location then applications are the it used in terrestrial aerial marine navigation disaster management precise timing and scientific research and in tracking next we will see about gravitational waves Recently, a scientist unveiled the evidence that gravitational waves are the permanent 
permanenting the universe at a low frequencies creating a cosmic background hum then these gravitational waves are the ripples in the fabric of a space time caused by the most energetic events in the cosmos such as a black hole mergers and a neutron star collision these waves are the most powerful gravitational waves are created by created when object move at a very high speed and then albert einstein predicted the existence of the gravitational waves in 1916 the first detected in uh, 2015 with the help of laser interferometer gravitational observatory detectors it is first detected in 2015 with the help of laser interferometer gravitational observatory detectors that is lgo the study of gravitational waves helps the scientists to expand their knowledge about the nature and evolution of the universe and to answer mysteries about the nature of merging the supermassive black holes next we'll discuss about lego india project recently union cabinet have approved the in cabinet has approved the laser interferometer gravitational wave observatory or lego project to to build an advanced gravitational wave detector this lego India is a planned advanced gravitational wave observatory it's a part of worldwide network and the observatory will be the third of its kind then exact specification of the twin lego and a and this twin lego in the louis in washington in the usa a fourth detector in kagura japan is in the pipeline and uh, next this location hingoli district in maharashtra in india this lego project is in hingoli district of maharashtra and the funding funding by the department of atomic energy and the department of science and technology the capacity of this project is to collaborate with the project between conservative between consortium of indian research institutions and the ligo laboratory in usa this project is collaboration between the indian research institution and the usa laboratory next we'll see about black holes and time deletions recently a scientist have observed a class of black holes that is called quasars class of black holes called quasars demonstrating time dilation in early universe this time dilation illustrates that during that period time passed at only about fifth of the current time the time passed at only about fifth of the current time this quasar is a uh, class of black holes that is is extremely active and a luminous type of active the galactic nucleus sometimes they are demonstrably active supermassive black holes residing at the center of galaxies and there are no quasars near the milky way then we'll see about this time dilation mean time passes at a different rates for different observers mean time passes at different rates for the different observers depends on their relative motion or a position in a gravitational field and since theory of theory of relativity also proposed the, about the this effect of time dilation an occurrence of this time dilation is objects with a lot of mass create a strong gravitational field and uh, strong the stronger the gravity the more space time curves and the slower time itself proceeds black holes it is a cosmic body in our space 
where gravity pulls so much that even light cannot escape from this then this matter is squeezed into a tiny space and the formation is most black holes form from the remnants of a large star that dies in a supernova explosion other features invisible and can be a big or small cannot be directly observed and but the area just outside the boundary of the black hole emits all kind of radiations including even visible light next we'll see the topic of dark matter map recently astronomers have made the most detailed map of the dark matter showing that both the limpiness of the universe and the rate at which universe is growing they have created a map by using the microwave detector of the atacama cosmology telescope act astronomers we are observing by this act whether einstein predictions in this theory are correct regarding the expansion of this university expansion of this universe they are also observed the sanctity of the standard model of cosmology as per the smc model there is a fixed and precise sequence of these events and that followed by the big bang we'll see observation outcomes of outcomes made by the astronomers in invisible world features of the invisible world were observed where uh, uh, which are hundreds hundreds of millions of light years across okay then a cosmic microwave background radiation and a gravitational pull of large heavy structure including dark matter warps the cmb radiation on its 14 billion year journey to the earth then this cmb or a fossil radiation is the cool remnant of the first light then uh, this cmb light gets deflected by dark matter lumpiness measurement showed that the lumpiness of the universe is of the exact right size as per the smc an expansion the rate at which it is growing is just what was expected from our smc based on einstein's einstein theory and the gravitational lensing it is observed while recording moment of the cmb next james webb space telescope james webb space telescope jwst recently it took an image of the denser heart of the milky way and a reverse and it revealed the its fe- new features it took an image of dense heart of the milky way galaxy and revealed the new features the star forming region called the sagittarius sagittarius c is a supermassive black hole at the milky way galaxy center and it included a proto stars star that are still forming and gaining mass we'll see about this uh, key findings of this james webb space telescope and questioning the standard model of the cosmology discovered the existence of full formed galaxies far earlier than should have been possible according to the standard model of cosmology and a low mass of galaxies galaxies brightness is typically determined by its mass but finding suggested that less massive galaxy can glow bright then studying star formation the star formation unfolded differently in galaxies first few hundred million years after the big bang event than it does in large galaxies like our milky way next we'll see neutrino particles for the first time scientists have been neutrino is originating from the scientists have seen the neutrinos originating from the central disk of the milky way this neutrinos are fundamental particles like electrons so they can't broken down into smaller particles 
these neutrons are can't break broken down into smaller particles then characteristics are these very tiny mass has no charge and half spin and travel at almost speed of light and in a straight line from their sources next uh, it rarely interact with other inner matters with other inner matter then outnumber uh, outnumber all the atoms in the universe and only affected by the gravity and weak force it's only affected by the gravity and weak force it is in three types electron neutrino tau neutrino neutrino and mau neutrino they can change from one type to another as they travel this process is called neutrino oscillation this atmospheric neutrinos produce around 15 km from above the earth surface they are produced from cosmic rays which consist of proton and heavy nuclei and they collide with atmospheric molecules such as nitrogen to give of points and mons which further decay to produce neutrons sorry neutrinos we'll see the sources of this neutrinos when cosmosic when cosmic rays collide with interstellar matter when cosmic rays collide with the interstellar matter then produced by star like a sun and exploding stars of super like supernovas on earth neutrinos are produced when unstable atomic decay it produced when unstable at atoms decay and even banana emits neutrinos due to natural radioactivity of the potassium and india proposed india based neutrino observatory ino will study only about uh, neutrinos atmospheric neutrinos sorry neutrinos it is uh, it is a multi institutional effort aimed to aimed at building world class underground laboratory with a rock cover approximately 1200 meter for non accelerator based high energy nuclear physics research in india and it is jointly funded funded by the atomic energy and department of science and technology iron calorimeter detector will be used for studying neutrino neutrinos and it will be located in body west hills region in the district of tamil nadu it is located here due to the proximity of the equator due, it is located here because because of its due to the proximity of the equator next we'll see jupiter ic moons explorer juice mission European Space Agency has launched this juice from European spacecraft French Guiana onto Jupiter and its moons through Ariane 5 Ariane 5 we'll see about this juice mission objectives are to study the Jupiter and three large ocean bearing moons that are Ganymede Galisto and Europa observe our moons weather it is observe our moons weather magnetic field and gravitational pull and other elements also then a spacecraft is a record 85 square meters of the solar panels then it has a payloads including gala ganymede laser altimeter and maziz next uvs next it will use double gravity assist it will use the double gravity assist for the first time from earth and moon to propel itself towards the jupiter we will see some major space missions to jupiter punya 10 by nasa oyega oyega 1 and 2 by nasa galileo this is also by again nasa alices this is by nasa and esa juno by nasa again europa clipper by nasa expected in 2024 recently nasa's osiris ari x mission brought the sample from carbon rich asteroid bennu back to the earth 
they have brought the sample from the carbon rich asteroid bennu back to earth this osirs rx this mission is an acronym for origin spectral inter interpretation resource identification and security regolith explorer goal of this mission is collect the sample from the asteroid bennu and deliver them to earth bennu is a small near the earth carbon rich asteroid bennu is a small near the earth carbon rich asteroid the new journey asteroids will continue on a new mission to asteroid apophis hence named as osiris apex osiris apophis explorer outer space governance recently united nation has released the policy brief title for all humanity the future of outer space governance okay this existing governance framework is in 1958 united nation committee on the peaceful of peaceful uses of outer space was established 1958 un committee of the peaceful uses of outer space was established uh, governors explore, exploration and use the space for the benefit for all humanity it was supported by un office for outer space affairs five international space treaties are outer space treaty 1967 on the principle of governing the activities of states then rescue agreement in 1968 this to return of astronauts and the return of object launched in outer space next liability convention on 1972 the convention on international liability for damage caused by space objects next uh, registration convention 1976 this is registration of objects launched into outer space then moon agree agreement 1979 the activities of the state on moon and to other celestial bodies india is a signatory to all five of these treaties but has ratified only four signatory for all five but it ratified only four except this moon agreement this one moon agreement it is not ratified we'll see some concept and terms which were recently in news goldilocks zone it is it is a habitat zone it is the area around the star where it is not too hot and not too cold for a liquid water to exist on the surface of of the surrounding planets it's called goldilocks zone earth comes in this goldilocks zone that's why water exists there in water exists on the uh, earth then we'll see exoplanet new jupiter size exoplanet called the toi 4603b or hd 245134b has been discovered these are exoplanets then uh, a exoplanet is any planet beyond our solar system most orbit of the most orbit other stars and a free floating exoplanets called the rogue planets then composition range from very rocky to very gas rich next fast radio burst frb it is a bright and brief burst of electromagnetic radiation it is seen in radio wave frequencies that usually last thousands of second and this frb is lose energy when they reach the earth that difficult to spot and they travel through the galaxies and in between them they passes through the hot gas and then the sci- this allows the scientists to detect the major the matter and between galaxies they are currently invisible to us and this and the causes of frbs are not entirely known and next uh, gamma ray burst grbs a new study suggests that uh, grbs have the potential to temporarily destroy the ozone layer 
these are the most powerful violent explosions in the universe then these are these brief flashes of high energy light result from explosive events such as uh, birth of black holes and collision between neutron stars these are the brief flashes of high energy light that result from explosive events such as uh, birth of black hole and collision between neutron stars then grbs are also known to ionize molecules at the bottom of the ionosphere bottom of ionosphere but can also affect the entire ionosphere it affects the entire ionosphere next quasi moon astronomers have discovered a new asteroid along the earth recently it is considered as a quasi moon quasi satellite it orbits the sun in a similar time frame of the earth does but it is the only slightly influenced by the earth gravitational pull next zero shadow day this day is a phenomenon when the sun is exactly overhead and the shadow of symmetrical and vertical objects vanishes okay zero day zero shadow day is a phenomenon when the sun is exactly overhead and shadow of the symmetrical and vertical objects vanishes this happens for the location between tropics and is caused by the northern and southern motions of the sun during the course of year next blazer indian astronomical observatory located in henle ladakh has observed the brightening of bl brightening of bl lacertia a blazer a blazer is a type of galaxy a blazer is a type of galaxy that is powered by humongous hum black okay this is powered by humongous black hole it is among the one of the brightest and most powerful object in the universe and it is known for emitting highly energetic particles and radiation and it is known for emitting highly energetic particles and radiation next we'll see the topic of health a brain computer interface bci recently a neuralink and an elon musk company has successfully installed a wireless brain computer interface implant in a human patient in 2023 neuralink has has granted a permission by the us food and drug administration for human trials its aim is to build a next generation its aim is to build a next generation brain implant with a, at least 100 times more the more brain connection than device currently approved by fda its aim is to build a next generation brain implant with at least 100 times more brain connections than device currently approved this brain computer interface bci a system that determines functional intent the desire to change move control or interact with something in our environment directly from the brain activity and allows controlling an application or a device using only our mind allows controlling an application over application or a device using only our mind then it has a three main parts it has three main parts a device to detect and record signals coming from the brain next uh, computer to process and analyze the recorded brain activity the third one an application or device to control another important part of bci is a feedback this bci's are ty- typically divided into unidirectional and bidirectional categories based on the direction of their action unidirectional bci uh, either receives either receives a signal from brain or send them to it while bidirectional bci allows for information exchange of both direction different techniques to measure the brain activity for bcis next we'll see antimicrobial resistance topic amr who in partnership with the global amr r&d hub has released the incentivizing the development of new antibacterial treatments 2023 report 
this report is for the g7 countries monitoring and handling of amr this report is for the g7 countries monitoring and handling amr we'll see about this global amr and r and d hub it's a partnership of countries non governmental donor organization and intergovernmental organization it's a partnership of countries non governmental donor organization and the intergovernmental organization it is launched in 2018 to address the challenges and improve the coordination and collaboration in a global amr r&d using in using a one health approach antimicrobial resistance amr it occurs when bacteria virus fungi and parasites evolve over a time and no longer respond to the medicine antimicrobials are the medicine used to prevent and treat infections caused by microorganisms these antimicrobials includes antibiotics for a bacteria antiviral for virus and antifungal and antiparasitic six it makes in amr makes infections harder to treat and increasing the risk of diseases spread severe illness and health microorganism that develop antimicrobial resistance are sometimes referred to as super bugs drivers of this amr misuse and overuse of the antimicrobials and lack of awareness and knowledge and poor access to the quality and affordable medicine and diagnostics taking incorrect doses of antibiotics to cure disease and lack of access to clean water sanitation and hygiene in using the antibiotics in livestock har- farming then triple planetary crisis climate change pollution and biodiversity losses recently a ministry of health and family welfare released the strategic operational guidelines for a national program for prevention and control of non communicable diseases 2023 to 2030 the other initiatives launched during this events are 17 by 25 initiative launched that is 70 million people why with the hypertension and diabetes to be put on standard care by 2025 then sashakt portal for training of 40000 primary healthcare medis- medical officers then key, key highlights of this guidelines the highlights of this guidelines are the national program for prevention and control of cancer diabetes cardiovascular disease and a stroke program has been renamed and the name is the new name is national program for the prevention and control of the non communicable disease the program is includes chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and asthma then non alcoholic fatty liver disease next pradhan mantri national dialysis program uh, we'll see what are uh, non communicable disease this ncds are also known as the chronic disease that tend to be one of the long duration and are a result of the combination of genetic and Uh, psychological environment and behavior factors the main types are cardiovascular disease cancer chronic respiratory diseases and diabetics ncds accounted for almost 61.8% of the deaths in india in 2016 the initiatives done by india to curb this ncds that is non communicable diseases national action plan for monitoring and framework of prevention control then fit india movement by the ministry of youth affairs and sports next tuberculosis tb world health organization released the global tuberculosis report 2023 uh, this tb is caused by bacillus mycobacterium tuberculosis which most often affects the lungs pulmonary tb tb can also affect other areas of the body too that is known as extra pulmonary tb Uh, types of extra extra pulmonary tb includes the gastrointestinal tb and skeletal tb and liver tb most common medications most common medications include io iosanide isoniazid rifampin 
ethyl toll and parazinamide parazinamide next we'll see sickle cell disease recently us has approved the first crispr cri spr based gene therapy to treat the patients with sickle cell disease gascivi and lifegenia lifegenia a first cell based gene therapies is approved for the treatment of sd scd in patients of 12 year of age and older india has also launched the national sickle cell anemia elimination mission to tackle this scd we'll see about this uh, sickle cell disease it's a type of hemoglobin disorder it's inherited blood disease that affect how oxygen oxygen is carried in the body and then it's characterized by the modification in shape of the red blood cell from smooth donut shape into a crescent or a half moon shape then it can lead to a stroke or eye problems and uh, symptoms are jaundice liver spleen and enlargement in india sds are more in common in tribal population stem cell or a bone marrow transplants is the only cure for this disease stem cell or a bone marrow transplants is the only cure for this disease rare diseases for the first time ministry of health and family welfare introduced the genetic drugs for the treating of four rare diseases this includes trisomenia trisomenia type 1 Gaucher's disease, Wilson's disease, and Dravet or Lennox Gastaut syndrome, seizures. We'll see about this rare disease, a, a lifelong disease or a disorder with prevalence of one or less than less per uh, thousand population, mostly uh, genetic in nature. Currently affects five percent of the worldwide population. the key initiatives of this uh, rare diseases are national policy for rare disease 2021 the provision include the financial assistance and categorization into three groups group 1 2 3 3 group 1 one time cure one time curative treatment then uh, second requires long term having relatively low cost of low cost of treatment then uh, with a very high cost life lifelong therapy exemption from basic customs duty to a rare drug disease drugs for a personal use then production linked incentive scheme for para cetacles paramcetacles pharmaceuticals sorry uh, covers argon it covers the argon drugs this production linked incentive scheme for pharmaceuticals covers the orphan drugs next non sugar sweeteners uh, recently who the international agency for research on cancer classified the commonly used non sugar sweetener aspartame as a possibly carcinogenic to humans we'll see about this non sugar sweeteners it contains few to no calories but higher sweetness intensity per gram than sweetness with the calories like table sugar fruit juice concentrated concentrates uh, it referred as low calorie sweeteners it is artificial sweeteners it is used to enhance to a flavor of fruit uh, it is used to enhance the flavor of the foods and used to and it includes the synthetically derived chemicals synthetically derived chemicals and a natural extracts and then found in many beverages food like a frozen desserts and yogurt food and beverages containing lcs sometimes carry the label sugar free and or diet next we'll see the topic e cigarettes recently as per the world health organization urgent action is needed to protect the hu- protect the children and prevent the uptake of e-cigarettes what is this e-cigarettes the prohibition of electronic cigarettes 
production manufacture import export transport sale or distribution storage advertisement act fica 2019 banned the e cigarettes in india the act defines the electronic cigarettes or e cigarette it is an electronic device that hits a substance it hits a substance which may or may not contain nicotine and flavors to create an aerosol for inhalation and it includes all forms of the electronic nicotine delivery systems and heat not burn products heat not burn products e huka next however it doesn't include any product license under the drugs and cosmetic act 1940 and they are also sometimes called mods wave pens waves tank system electronic nicotine delivery systems it working is they produce an aerosol that is inhaled by the user that is inhaled by the user by heating liquid that usually contains nicotine flavors and other chemicals act defines the e cigarette as an electronic device see this act uh, defines this e cigarettes this e cigarette as an electronic device that heats a substance which may or may not contain nicotine and a flavors to create a aerosol aerosol for inhalation it includes all forms of electronic nicotine delivery system as we discuss here oh uh, heat not burn products and e hookock however it doesn't include any product license there's no license for this drugs under this cosmetic 1940 it has no license Recently, WHO launched the Preparedness and Resilience for Emerging Threats Initiative. This, this is PRET initiative. We'll see about this PRET initiative. It's an initiative approach to improve the disease pandemic preparedness. Uh, recognize that same systems, capacities, knowledge, and tools can be leveraged and applied for a group of pathogens. It's applied for a group of pathogens based on their mode of transmission. uh respiratory vector bone food bone etc it provides a platform for national regional and global stakeholders to collaborate to strengthen the preparedness and it operates under the aegis of the international health regulation ihr 2015 is a legally binding agreement of 196 state parties ihr includes all 194 member states of who to build the capacity to detect and report the potential public health emergencies worldwide we'll see some diseases which were recently in news viral disease chikungunya recently us has approved the world first vaccine for chikungunya named ix chick a mosquito borne disease caused by a chikungunya virus the transmission is by the mosquito aids tegomia says tegomia and uh, and aids tegomia alpha pictus these mosquitoes bite primarily during the day daylight hours it can be passed from a pregnant mother to an unborn child can be fatal to a newborns include india's national vector borne disease control program it included in the this national vector bone this is control program next zinka virus first case of zinka virus has been reported in mumbai maharashtra transmitted primar- primarily by the aedes mosquitoes which bite mosquito during the day some mosquitoes transmit yellow fever yellow fever then it is associated with the gullian berry syndrome and neuropathy mellitus in adults and children transmitted from mother to fetus during the pregnancy through a sexual contact uh, transfusion of blood transfusion of blood and blood products and organ transplantation then next swine flu uh, strain h1n2 uk has confirmed the first human case of swine flu strain h1n2 it is caused by swine influenza virus the transmission is by direct or indirect exposure to the pigs or a contaminated environments 
carrying the which carrying the pathogen then symptoms are similar to regular flu and include fever cough next lumpy skin disease it's more than 100 cows have died of L lsd megalai in lsd megalai an infectious it is an infectious viral disease mainly affecting the cattle this lumpy skin disease affect the cattle or is causing fever nodules are on skin occasionally death it, it also causes the uh, reduced milk yield of animals it's originally found in africa it has also spread in spread to countries like uh, middle east asia and eastern europe it is transmitted by the blood feeding insects such as certain species of flies and mosquitoes its spread can be controlled through the attenuated virus vaccine it can be controlled by attenuated virus vaccine next hepatitis c according to the who egypt became the first country to achieve a gold tier status on a path to elimination of hepatitis c it is eliminated the hepatitis c it is a viral infection that affects the liver hepatitis c is a viral infection that affects the liver the transmission is uh, reuse or inadequate sterilization of uh, medical equipment and especially uh, uh, syringe or uh, needles in healthcare settings reuse of syringe or needles then hepatitis b virus is transmitted much like hiv globally the number of people affected with hepatitis b and c virus are several times more than the those affected with hiv some those affected with hepatitis b and c viruses do not show the symptoms for many years it will not show the symptoms for many years there is no vaccine for hepatitis c but it can be treated with antiviral medication See, there is no vaccine for this hepatitis c but can be treated with antiviral medications whereas effective vaccine available for hepatitis a e and b for hepatitis a e and b vaccine is available next we will see about nifa virus nifa virus uh, the Kerala has witnessed the outbreak of NIFA, that is NIFA virus NIV. Uh, this is a zoonotic virus transmitted from animals to humans. NIFA virus transmitted from animals to humans. It can also transmitted through the contaminated food or directly between people. Uh, the fruit bats are of, of family. Fruit bats of family and genus are the neural so are the natural host of the nifa virus fruit bats family and genus are the natural host of this nifa virus in the zoonotic disease pathogens may be a bacterial or viral or a parasitic or other unconventional agents the other prominent zoonotic diseases includes the rabies brucellosis japanese encephalitis Phalitis and plague. The spread has increased due to the use of antibiotics in animals and reduction in forest cover. Then neglected tropical diseases. WHO has notified NOMA as NTD. A NOMA is a severe this gangrious disease of mouth and face. It is mainly affects the children aged two to six year old. Is age 2 to 6 year old suffering from the malnutrition living in an extremely uh, living in extreme poverty with a poor oral health africa is the most affected continent and it is caused by the variety of pathogens including virus bacteria parasite fungi toxins and this neglected tropical disease include the dengue chikungunya rabies leprosy etc then India has successfully eliminated the certain NTDs. Means India has successfully eliminated certain this neglected tropical diseases like Guina worm, Trachoma, Trachoma and Yaws. Initiatives to tackle these NTDs, London Declaration on NTDs and Kigley Declaration on NTDs adopt the targets to eradicate or control NTD by 2030. Next, we will see some key concepts or terms which were recently in news. 
पेज थेरपी रिसेंटली स्टडी फाउंड दैट पब्लिक एक्सेप्ट यूज ऑफ बैक्टीरियल किलिंग वायरस पेज थेरपी एज एन अल्टरनेटिव टू एंटीबायोटिक्स पेज थेरपी इन्वॉल्व द यूजिंग बैक्टीरो बैक्टीरियोफेजस टू ट्रीट द बैक्टीरियल इन्फेक्शस बैक्टीरियोफेजस आर वायरसेस दैट इन्फेक्ट एंड रेप्लीकेट ओनली इन बैक्टीरियल सेल्स बैक्टीरियोफेजस आर वायरस दैट इन्फेक्ट आर इन्फेक्ट एंड रेप्लीकेट ओनली इन बैक्टीरियल सेल्स सिग्निफिकेंस आर अनलाइकली टू डैमेज ह्यूमन सेल्स ड्यू टू इनसिग्निफिकेंट डिफरेंस इन बैक्टीरियल सेल्स एंड ह्यूमन सेल्स इज इनहेरेंटली नॉन टॉक्सिक इन नेचर दिस पेज थेरेपी इज इनहेरेंटली नॉन टॉक्सिक इन नेचर मैक्रोपेजस एज पर द कैंसर सेल स्टडी सैंसकेंट मैक्रोपेजस इन द लंग प्रोमोटेड टोमो ग्रोथ सैंसकेंट सेल्स डू नॉट डाई ओके द सैंसकेंट सेल्स डू नॉट डाई एंड आर नॉट यूजली एलिमिनेटेड फ्रॉम द बॉडी दे कैन स्टे एंड बिल्ड इन टिश्यूज दे आर ऑल्सो रेफर्ड एज जॉम्बी सेल्स दिस मैक्रोपेजस These macrophages are a type of white blood cells that are act as body's first line of defense against the infection. These macrophages are a type of white blood cells that act as a body's first line of defense against the infection. They are large and specialized cells that recognize the engulf and destroy the target cells. Next, we'll see the nuclear medicine. Russia undertook an initiative of BRICS collaboration in. nuclear medicine uh, nuclear medicine is a medical specialty it's a specialty that uses a radioactive tracers to assess the bodily functions and to diagnose the diagnose and treat the disease risk or added exposure to ionizing radiations can risk can increase the risk of developing cancer then radioactive tracers are uh, used in imaging test that help find the problems in inside the body cobalt 60 is used in medically for a radiation therapy cobalt 60 is used for medically for a radiation therapy as implants and as a external source of radiation exposure hela cells were the first human cells to be successful cloned the cells never reached the point of senescence sen- these cells never reach the point of senescence uh, since due to uh, mutations it has achieved the ability to keep on d- dividing then significance are the test that affects the radiation cosmetics gene mapping and studying the human diseases this hela cells uh, the test affects radiation cosmetics gene mapping and studying human diseases it helps and uh, the cell culture the cells are grown in petri dish or in a lab control condition next cervax vaccine a study uh, lasket oncology reveals that the cervax vaccine by the serum institute of india elicits comparable immune response to mercax gadisil vaccine the cervax Cervax is a India's first indigenous quadrivalent human papilloma papilloma virus vaccine for the prevention of cervical cancer and other HPV associated cancers. This Cervax addresses the only HPV types of six, eleven, sixteen, and eighteen. It can be given to both genders, age group of nineteen uh, to twenty-six years. HPV sexually transmitted infections is a major of sorry is a is a major cause of cervical cancer inverse vaccine research, re, recently researchers have developed an inverse vaccine against the autoimmune disease at the university of chicago this in autoimmune disease the immune system attacks healthy tissues example psoriatic disease and this mechanism of inverse vaccine is it makes the immune system forgets forget a specific mo- molecule by using this special property of the liver naturally 
marks certain molecules as not harmful to the body the vaccine combines two things an antigen a molecule that an immune system attacks and another a molecule that looks like a part of old cell and a liver recognition of a old cell as a friends tricks to immune the system and doesn't attack the antigen unlike the traditional vaccine that give immune system a glimpse of pathogen to a prime lead to a fight next we'll see the topic alternative energy the battery energy storage system solar recently solar energy cooperation of india limited has successfully commissioned india's largest battery energy storage in chatisgarh uh, this commission bss stores energy using the solar energy and it works under the aegis of ministry and new ministry of new and renewable energy earlier union union cabinet has approved the scheme of viability gap funding for the development of bss this battery energy storage system which uses different electrochemical reactions to store the electricity uh, this ess energy storage system can be used independent of or as a part of a power system infrastructure at a various levels in gener generation transmission and distribution uh, there are types of bss standard flow batteries okay in standard batteries consist of pairs of plates that is electrodes immersed in a electrolyte electrodes are separated by the non conducting materials include uh, lead acid nickel cadmium lithium ion battery and cad and sodium sulfur battery in flow batteries uses the tanks of electrolyte and a membrane to control the flow of electrons and pumps to control the flow of electrolyte redox flow battery and another one is hydrix flow battery hydrix flow battery in this flow of batteries next li ion battery recently a nobel laureate and co-inventor of the lithium ion batteries john banister good enough passed away and we'll see about this uh, li ion battery it's a rechargeable battery in which lithium ions move from negative electrode to positive electrode during the discharge and back when recharging and the materials used as electrodes include the lithium cobalt oxide lithium manganese oxide and lithium iron phosphate the good enough developed a lithium battery with a cathode of cobalt oxide uh, li ion batteries uses either a either as a electrolyte solid state lithium batteries has a excellent potential energy density and the uh, and a solid state battery uses a solid electrolyte not a liquid then at we'll see the advantages of this um advantages of advantages of li ion battery li ion back battery okay uh, light it is a lightweight and has a high energy density and have a 5000 cycles more compared to uh, just 400 to 500 cycles in the lead lead acid batteries then it requires low maintenance low self discharge rate and no memory effect in memory effect repeated partial discharge or charge cycle can cause a battery to remember a low lower capacity and the disadvantage of this line lion battery is uh, it is high price tendency to overheat and can lead to a thermal thermal runway and combustions advantages are the high energy density and low maintenance and no memory effect but disadvantage is its high cost price and the tendency of overheat next we'll see about the small modular reactors recently china has launched the first world's first fourth generation nuclear reactor it is used small modular reactor design and this fourth generation reactor uses the gas helium 
for cooling unlike a conventional power plants that use pressurized water this mr this uh, smrs this nuclear reactor or advanced nuclear reactors power generation capacity ranging from uh, less than 30 megawatt to 300 megawatt it is small small physically a fraction of the size of conventional nuclear reactor is small and modulator systems and components to be a factor assembled and the transported as a unit to a location for installation reactors are the harness nuclear fission then advantages uh, it's adaptable and scalable a long refueling interval then compact design passive safety features then economical uh, recently us scientists achieved the achieved the net energy gain for a second time in nuclear fusion reactions we'll see about this nuclear fusion a process in which two light atomic nuclei combine to form a single heavier one while releasing massive amount of energy it occurs in a state of matter called plasma hot charged gas made up of positive ions and free moving electrons and next in f- fusion in fusion two positive nuclei have to come close to each other however they repel each other this phenomenon is called as the coulomb barrier and next significance of this nuclear fusion is it's a clean and safe power and 1 kg fusion fuel provides as much as energy as 10 million kilograms of fossil fuel hydrogen is available in abundance we'll see about this net energy gain it's a critical for commercial commercial fusion power implies nuclear fusion process generates more energy than the nuclear fusion process consumes India is a part of the international thermonuclear experiment and reactor this project too in this project india is a member india is also a part of this itr project to demonstrate uh, energy from the nuclear reactors india also india also india has also construct its indigenous tokamak aditya and semi indigenous steady state superconducting tokamak sst1 this itr aims to demonstrate nuclear fusion as a clean green source of energy this itr located in france and its collaboration of china eu india japan korea russia and us it seems to build the world largest tokamak tokamak a magnif a magnetic fusion device designed to tap into the potential of fusion energy a tokamak operates on same principle that power the sun and stars next karakpur nuclear power plants uh, recently the first indigenous 700 megawatt karakpur nuclear plant started in gujarat this cap 3 this cap 3 is the largest indigenous nuclear power reactor built by the nuclear power corporation of india limited then it is the biggest indigenous developed variant pressurized heavy water reactor okay in 2020 it had achieved its first critis- criticality criticality refers to the uh, condition in nuclear reactor operations where the number of neutrons produced by fusion reaction is sufficient to sustain a self sustaining chain reaction and this phwrs use a natural uranium as a fuel and heavy water as a moderator once again uh, this phwrs uses a natural uranium and as a and heavy water as a moderator uranium as a fuel heavy water as a moderator in, in and then karakpur 4 has also recently attained criticality and it is a second in the series of 16 indigenous phwr of 700 megawatt each being a set up in in the country 
Next we'll see about the topic defense. Yes, 400 year defense system. Recently, India Air Force deployed a S-400 missile units on China and Pakistan border as per the report. We'll see about this S-400, one of the world's most advanced air defense system it is. And uh, it's a mob uh, mobile long-range surface to air missile. This S-400 is a surface to air missile system. Surface to air missile system developed by the Russian state-owned enterprises and its capability to protect against the almost all sort of aerial attacks including drone, missiles, rockets, even fight against fighter jets. Uh, the key features are the it carries command and control center and atomic tracking and targeting the system, launchers and support vehicles and it carries separate radar system which can detect the aerial targets to range of 400 km then it simultaneously engages 80 aerial targets and can hit hit the target up to altitude of 30 km it can hit up to the target to altitude of 30 km project kusha india set up deploy its own long range surface to air missile defense system disarm system Defense System Project Kusha by 2028 to 29. About this Kusha project, this project is designed under the preview of Defense Research Deployment, Defense Research and Development Organization DRDO. This project is designed under this DRDO. It will be designed to detect and destroy a wide array of threats, including stealth fighters, aircraft, drones, and cruise missiles will comprise three layers it has three layers surface to air missile uh, each designed to engage targets at a different range is capable of hitting the 150 250 and 350 kilometer next hyperscopic sorry next topic is hypersonic missile uh, recently iran presented its first domestically made hypersonic a missile named Fatha. Fatha having a target range of 1400 kilometer. This hypersonic missile is a type of weapon that travels at a speed that exceeds five times the fast, five times the speed of sound. Typically, it's typically uh, exceeding the March 5 and fly at a much lower altitude than a conventional ballistic missiles. And there are uh, Two types of hypersonic system. One is hypersonic glide vehicle launched from a rocket. Another one is hypersonic cruise missile powered by air breathing high speed engines scramjets. Then we'll see the advantages of hypersonic weapons. Uses only kinetic energy. It uses only a kinetic energy and energy derived from the motion to destroy unhardened targets in underground facilities and it could enable the responsive long range strike options against distant and defended and it is difficult to detect due to the due to their speed and man variability then india's status is as per the as per uh, hypersonic technology demonstrator vehicle program India has successfully tested a March 6 scramjet. India has successfully tested a March 6 scramjet. US, Russia, China, China lead in hypersonic weapons programs. While Australia, India, France, Germany and Japan are also developing such technology. Recently, Russia used an advanced hypersonic missile Zircon. Zircon. For the first time recent strikes on strike on ukraine next we'll see other missiles which were recently in news pralai ballistic missile india successfully test fire pralai missile it is developed by the drdo and range is 150 to 500 kilometer short range ballistic missile and it is surface to surface missile and payload capacity is 500 to 1000 kg and it has a solid fuel propellant 
बेस्ड ऑन पृथ्वी डिफेंस व्हीकल नेक्स्ट अस्त्रा मिजाइल इट्स अ लाइट कॉम्बैट एयरक्राफ्ट तेजस लाइट कॉम्बैट एयरक्राफ्ट तेजस है सक्सेसफुली टेस्ट फायर द अस्त्रा मिजाइल दिस अस्त्रा मिजाइल इज इंडिजिनियसली डेवलप्ड बाई डी आर डी ओ एंड इट्स बियॉन्ड विजुअल रेंज एयर टू एयर मिजाइल डिजाइन टू एंगेज द डिस्ट्रॉय हाईली मैन्योरिंग सुपरसोनिक एयरक्राफ्ट एंड ऑल वेदर डे एंड नाइट कैपेबिलिटी इट हैज एंड इज डिजाइन टू माउंट द फाइटर एयरक्राफ्ट इट्स रेंज इज एटी टू हंड्रेड एंड टेन किलोमीटर फॉर वर्सन ऑफ एम के वन एंड वन सिक्सटी किलोमीटर फॉर वर्सन ऑफ एम के टू इट्स अल्टीट्यूड अप टू ट्वेंटी किलोमीटर एंड मैक्स स्पीड इज मार्च फोर पॉइंट फाइव नेक्स्ट वील सी अ स्पाइक नॉन लाइन ऑफ साइट एंटी टैंक गाइडेड मिसाइल इंडियन एयरफोर्स हैज रिसीव द इसराइल स्पाइक इस एन एल ओ एस एंटी टैंक गाइडेड मिसाइल द स्पाइक एन एल सी विल बी इंटीग्रेटेड विथ रशियन ओरिजन फ्लीट ऑफ एम आई सेवेंटीन वी फाई हेलीकॉप्टर्स देन अबाउट स्पाइक एन एल ओ एस इट बिलोंग्स टू सिक्स जनरेशन ऑफ स्पाइक मिशन मिसाइल्स सॉरी एंड इट केपेबल ऑफ डिस्ट्रॉइंग द एनिमी टारगेट्स हाइडन एंड बियॉन्ड द माउंटेन्स फ्रॉम रेंजेस लॉन्ग रेंजेस रेंज इज अप टू थर्टी किलोमीटर एंड इज लाइट वेट फायर एंड फगेट टैक्टिकल प्रिसीशन गाइडेड मिसाइल यूजिंग द इलेक्ट्रो ऑप्टिकल एंड फाइबर ऑप्टिक टेक्नोलॉजीज विल सी ड्रोन्स एयरक्राफ्ट सबमेरीज विच वेर इन न्यूज टैक्टिकल एयरबोन प्लेटफॉर्म फॉर एरियल सर्वेलेंस बियॉन्ड हॉरिजन हॉरिजॉन दिस इज तपस बी एच टू नॉट वन इंडियन नेवी एंड डी आर डी ओ हैव सक्सेसफुली कैरीड आउट द कंट्रोल ऑफ केपेबिलिटीज ऑफ द तपस यू ए वी फ्रॉम आई एन एस सुभद्रा आई एन एस सुभद्रा इंडिजिनियसली डेवलप्ड तपस बी एच टू नॉट वन is a medium altitude long the endurance unmanned aerial vehicle it is developed by bangalore based aeronautical development establishment then autonomous flying wing technology demonstration drdo is successfully tests the autonomous this fwtd and uh, it is a indigenous high speed flying wing unmanned aerial vehicle and it has a tailless tailless fixed wing aircraft that houses its payload and fuel in its main wings it is a scaled down version of its uh, futuristic unmanned combat aerial vehicle it is designed and developed by the dro's aeronautical development establishment significance of this autonomous flying wing technology demonstrator it allows a take off and landing from any runway it allows to it allows a take off and landing from any runway surveyed coordinates and then allows the autonomous landing without need for ground radars or infrastructure pilot and india joined the elite club to master the flying wing technology and can be employed as a covet telt combat drone mq9b uh, repair us has approved the recently us has approved the scale of 31 us mq9b predator repair drones to india these drones that designed to fly over the horizon via satellite over 30 hours for over 30 hours And, and it is safely integrate into civil aeroplane aero airspace and enabling joint forces and civil authorities to deliver the real time situation all awareness and it integrates advanced maritime intelligence surveillance and resonances capabilities and it enables real time research real time search and patrol above below ocean surface and indian navy has planned to equip mq9b sea guardian with the sonoboy and 
this MQ9B has two variants, the Sky Guardian and the Sea Guardian. It's maritime variant. Next, we'll see aircraft or helicopters which were in news. MH60R Romeo helicopter. The Indian Navy has received sixth MH60R Romeo helicopter from the US. It is manufactured by Lockheed Martin Corporation. It is all weather helicopter designed to support multi missions with state of the art avionics and sensors. The key features are the anti submarine warfare and surveillance, anti shipping, and search risk capabilities. Next, next, Dhruva Advanced Light Helicopter. Recently, a government regulatory body has called for a safety upgrade of Dhruva Helicopter. This Dhruva Helicopter is a multi role, multi mission, new generation helicopter. It is certified for both civil and military roles. It is indigenously designed and developed by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited HAL and it is capable of operating in all weather conditions and powered by twin Shakti engines. Next, light combat aircraft LCA Tejas. LCA Tejas has completed 7 years of service in the Indian Air Force. It is a 4.5 generation all weather and multi role fight fighter aircraft and is capable of taking off offensive aircraft air support and close combat and ground ground attack roll at ease it is designed by the aeronautical development agency and produced by hindustan aeronautic limited key features are the key features are the smallest and light aircraft in its class and uh, in flight uh, refueling probe and equipped with the state of state of art satellite aided inertial navigation system next light combat helicopter prachand army successfully test series test fires the rocket and turret guns of indigenous lch prachand okay it was in, inducted into a indian air force in 2022 this LCH present is an indigenously developed multi role combat helicopter. It was designed and developed by the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and only attack the helicopter in the world that can land and take off at any altitude of 5000 meters. And it's capable of firing air to ground and air to air missiles and fitted with a 5.8 ton twin engine named. Shakti engine primarily designed for deployment in high altitude areas. Next, we'll see our submarines ships in news recently. Project 75 P75 succeeded, succeeded, uh, and it's a it is a part of 30 year submarine building plan and that ends in 2030. P75 requires Indian bidder to tie up. Uh, Tie up with the foreign collaborate better sensors and weapons and air independent propulsion system. Next, INS Impal. This INS Impal is the third of four indigenous Vishak Patanam class stealth guided missile destroyer under the project 15B. The project 15B is the latest in the lineage project 15a kolkata class and project 15 delhi class uh, the other two destroyers of this project ins vishakhapatnam and ins morumgaon india designed by the india and it is designed by the indian navy's warship design bureau and constructed by the masgon dock shipbuilders limited mumbai and it is armed with a medium range surface to air missile it is surface to uh, air missile and brahmo surface to surface missile indigenous torpedo launchers recently mahendragiri uh, frigates was a commissioned it's a part of project 17a nilgiri class and project 17a frigates 
are the follow on class of project 17 shivalik class frigates with the improved cell features and project 17 a ships have been designed in house of indian navy warship design bureau okay next we'll see some other important news dhanush artillery guns dhanush is a 155 mm and 45 calibre towered artillery gun it is demonstrated range of around 38 km with a specialized automation ammunition it is first indigenously built long range artillery gun features are equipped with a inertial navigation based sighting with sighting system inertial navigation based sighting system and it's onboard ballistic computation an advanced day night direct firing system and consists of self propositional unit and allows the gun to deploy itself in the field next cluster bomb usa has decided to supply ukraine with the cluster bombs as a part of new military aid package cluster bombs are the canisters that carry a tens to hundred tens to hundreds of smaller bomblets also known as sub munitions munitions sub munitions these canisters break break open at a prescribed height and depending upon the area of inter, intent target they are fused by the timber to explode closer to the, on our ground next nirakshi okay next nirakshi la india launched its first of its kind autonomous underwater vehicle named nirakshi can be used in mine detection mine disposal underwater surveys has endorsed four hours and can up to 300 meter depth sea next varunastra was successfully test fired with a live warhead against an undersea target by the indian navy it is indigenous shift launched anti-submarine torpedo it is designed and developed by the vizag based naval science and technology laboratory under the drdo and uh, features are the maximum speed is 440 knots and maximum operating depth is 600 meter and has a long range with multi maneuvering capabilities thermo thermobaric bomb human rights group of accused the myanmar's military of using the this thermo barrack bomb it is also known as vacuum or aerosol bomb or a fuel air explosive it consists of fuel container with the two separate explosive charges when it hits the target first explosive charge opens the container and widely scatters fuel mixture as a cloud second is a second charge then denote detonates the cloud second charge denotes detonates the cloud resulting in resulting in huge fireball a massive blast wave and a vacuum which sucks up uh, all surrounding oxygen it sucks up the all surrounding oxygen next project sanjay the army under project sanjay is working on creating battlefield surveillance system for composite operational picture this seeks this project seeks to create a multi multiple surveillance center for the field formation and enable the integration and large number of sensors next we'll see about next we'll see the topic awards and prizes recently which were in news nobel prize in physics 2023 the prize awarded for the experimental methods that generates the attosecond pulses of light for the study of electron dynamics in matter. Award year Perry Agostini, Ferenc, Kauss and Anne Hulia. We'll see about this electronic, electron dynamics. It is a behavior and moment of electrons within at atoms and molecules. Atoms can move and turn in millions of the billionth of a second 
Next, electron move are charged rapidly in the magnitude of attosecond, which makes them difficult to study, which is 1 into 10 to the power minus 18 of the second. Um, we'll see the generation of attosecond pulse of light. They transmitted an infrared laser beam through a noble gas and it produced the multiple overturns led to creation of the shorter pulses of light than were previously possible and produce the light pulses for a few hundred attoseconds with the help of interface next nobel prize in chemistry 2023 a prize award for discovery and development of quantum dots awardees are the mongi z bevendi and lois bruce and alexi ekmeo We'll see about these quantum dots a man-made semiconductor particles or a crystal size is normally not more than 10 10 nanometers at the nanosecond material show new distinct particles because of quantum physical force denoted as artificial atoms or a zero dimensional electron system properties of these quantum dots are they exhibit quantum confinement particles confined to very small and uh, fluorescence on existing emits protons of specific wavelength tunable emissions emit light of different colors depending on their size and uh, photostability less prone to photo bleaching then material variety and biocompatibility used in biological applications without causing harm to living cells next uh, next nobel prize in Physi uh, physiology nobel physiology nobel sorry nobel prize in physiology or a medicine in 2023 prize, prize awarded for the discoveries of concerning the nucleosides has modification that enabled the development of effective mRNA vaccine against the COVID-19. Awards are the prize was given to a Catalin Carico and Drew Weisman. About this mRNA, in this DNA stores all the genetic information in our bodies. The mRNA carries that genetic information similar to a blueprint or a set of instruction uh, that is then translated into a protein. RNA contains four nucleosides, nucleoside bases abbreviated A, U, G and C corresponding A, T, G, C in DNA, the letters of the genetic code. Working of an mRNA vaccine, the mRNA vaccine uses mRNA created in laboratory to, re, to teach our cells how to make a protein or even a just piece of protein that triggers an immune response in inside our bodies. In vitro transcribed mRNA or synthetic mRNA is a synthetic form of mRNA that is used in mRNA based vaccine. This immune response you which produces antibodies is that is what helps the protectors from getting sick immediately. Also body remembers the associated pathogens thus creating immunity for the future. We will see some miscellaneous topics. First one, rare Higgs boson decay. Scientists at European Union Organization for the Nuclear Research, CRN, which hosts the Large Hadron Collider, LHC, have discovered evidence of the Higgs boson decaying into Z boson and a photon. We'll see about the discovery. This is the very rare decay process that tells us important things about the Higgs boson as well as about the universe. And this decay was reported in the Atlas and CMS. General purpose detectors of the large hydro collider of CRN. We'll see about the discoveries implications. It provides indirect evidence to the existence of particles beyond those predicted by standard model of particle physics and it can lead to fifth fundamental force which is yet to be discovered.
the currently recognized force fundamental forces are namely strong force weak force electromagnetic force and gravitational force we'll see about this crn which was established at 1954 research at cern are probing fundamental structure of the universe and study the basic constituent of matter india is associated member of this we'll see higgs boson what is this it is a subatomic particle that was first theorized in this 1960s by physicist peter higgson and others it's also called as god particle then we'll see some properties of the higgs boson 125 to 35 giga electron volt mass it has and spin scalar particle and it has a zero spin lifetime its like lifetime is a very short and it rapidly decay into other particle detection the the recent discovery has found that higgs so decaying with the photon and z boson next we'll see about superconductivity recently the clamps of material lk99 defecting the room temperature superconductivity proved the inconsistent superconductivity is a phenomenon which certain materials exhibit zero electrical resistance and expulsion of magnetic fields when cooled below a critical temperature see uh, it is a phenomenon so in which certain materials exhibit a zero electrical resistance and the expulsion of magnetic field when cooled below the critical temperature and then it is discovered by the haik kemeling ons in 2011 currently superconductivity can be achieved only at very low temperature at more than uh, 250 degree celsius below zero next we'll see about rare earth elements recently hyderabad hyderabad based national geographical research institute has found large deposits of 15 rare earth elements in andhra pradesh anantpur district this rare earth elements are a group of 17 silver white soft heavy metal heavy metals that occur together periodic table a group consists of scandium yttrium and 15 lanthanide elements okay and rare earth elements are all metals having many similar properties and that often causes them to be found together in geographic sorry in geologic deposits we'll see their applications high end technology defense application and uh, in electronic devices like cell phones computers clean energy electrical vehicles in similar development scientists from the institute of minerals and materials technology bhuvaneshwar have estimated the quantity of rare earth elements that can be discovered from red mud red mud red mud is a toxic by product is a toxic by product of aluminum extraction from bauxite ore using the bayer process red mud contains uh, rare earth elements there are two strategies to uh, recover the rare element rare earth elements from red mud extract only r rws or extract all metals such as uh, iron titanium sodium including rs next vanadium a uh, Ge- geological survey of india gsi discovered vanadium from gulf of kambath in gujarat titanomagnetite is a primary source of element and is a formed when molten lava cools rapidly the first report vanadium occurs in the offshore sediments of india the first report vanadium occurs in the offshore sediments of india offshore we'll see about vanadium symbol v and the atomic number is 
it is classified as a transition metal it serves as a bridge or a transition between the two sides of the periodic metal see uh, reservoirs of the vanadium globally the brazil is the world's largest exporter of the vanadium one fourth of the total exporter followed by russia south africa china has the highest vanadium reservoirs and production 22 in india karnataka maharashtra odisha are the major states with the vanadium reservoirs in 2021 vanadium reservoirs were also found in arunachal pradesh vanadium redox flow batteries a type to, it is a type of rechargeable flow battery that employs a vanadium ions as the active materials next we will see lab grown diamonds recently indian prime minister during his state visit to the usa gifted a 75 carat sorry 7.5 carat eco friendly lab grown diamond eco friendly lab grown diamond to the first lady of usa we'll see about this lab grown diamond it's artificial manufactured diamonds through a crystallization of pure carbon with the same physical and chemical properties as natural diamonds it is used for industrial application due to their hardness and strength and uh, ideal for use cutters and in other tools and machines it used as a heat spreaders for high power laser di- diodes and laser arrays and a high power transistor due to their excellent thermal conductivity we'll see the methods of production of this lgd uh, lab grown diamonds uh, with a very high temperature pressure method okay a high temperature high pressure method and the second one is high sorry second one is chemical vapor deposition method first one high temperature and high pressure method second chemical vapor deposition method the government has eliminated 5% of tax on lgds next we'll see gent uh, magneto resistance recently a nobel laureate and regime discovered that graphene displays an anomalous gent magneto resistance at room temperature we'll see about this gent gent magneto resistance this gmr is the result of electrical resistance of a conductor being affected by the magnetic field in adjacent materials gent magneto resistance is the it is the result of electrical resistance of the conductor okay which is affected by magnetic fields in adjacent materials when a materials are magnetized in the same direction electrical resistance in the conductor is low okay and vice versa applications of this gmr it's hard disk drives and magneto resistive rm magneto resistive ram in computers biosensors automotive sensors and medical images okay Let's see about this graphene it's a two dimensional single atom thick layer of carbon atoms it's bonded in hexagonal be- honeycomb lattice structure it is extracted from the graphite displays unique physio physio chemical physico chemical properties like high surface area good bio compatibility strong mechanical strength and excellent thermal conductivity and fast fast electron transportation next we'll see about radiometric dating A recent study has shown that calcium 41 can be used as a radiometric dating as a carbon 14 with the help of technique called atom trap trace analysis okay we'll see what is radiometric radiometric dating it's a method of establishing how old something is perhaps a wooden artifact a rock or a fossil based on the presence of radioactive isotope within it example carbon 14 potassium 14 or argon 
we'll see uh, working how it works when an organic entity is alive its body keeps absorbing and losing carbon 14 atoms when it dies this process stops and the extinct carbon 14 starts to decay using the difference between the relative abundance of these atoms in the body and the number that should have been there researchers can estimate when the entities died this is how the working procedure takes place a draft national strategy for robotics recently the draft national strategy for robotics has been released by the minister of electronics and information technology called METI. this robot technology and a strategy this robot technology includes uh, designs construction operation use of robots then in and the classification of robots as per the nsr as per the nsr industrial service medical robots and METI will be implemented agency for this and telangana has become the fir first state in the country to launch state robotics frameworks Telangana has become the first state to state in the country to launch the state robotics framework. We will see applications of the robots, robotic, robotics, healthcare, uh, surgical robotics, telemedicare, telemedicine areas and it is used in national security. It is also used in manufacturing, logistics and warehousing automation. It is also used in agriculture. See, it's used in healthcare, national security, manufacturing, agriculture. Next, we'll see hybrid nanoparticles. A recent study used the hybrid nanoparticles or nano hybrids made up of gold and copper sulfide to cure the cancer cells using heat and enable their detection using the sound waves. We'll see about these nano hybrids. It is usually uh, less than 8 nanometer in size are made up of com combining at least two different nanoparticles or materials having size ranging from 1 to 100 nanometer. The mechanism is mechanism diagnosis due to the uh, photoacoustic properties they absorb light and generate the ultrasound wave and treatment is due to the photothermal property they produce heat which kills tumor cells and next we will see some other important news which were in news recently white prosperous as per the human rights watch israel fired the white phosphorus bombs over the gaza Leb and lebanon during their conflict with hamas White prosperous is a waxy yellowish to clear chemical with pungent garlic like odor. It is used by military in the form of various types of uh, various types of ammunition as an incendiary incendiary agent because it is spontaneous catches fire in the air. When it comes into contact with oxygen, it catches the fire. The applications are the it used as a component in fertilizers, food additives, and cleaning compounds. Impact of white phosphorus, severe deep burns, systematic toxicity, coughing, and headache. White phosphorus weapons are not banned, but their use in civil area is considered as a war crime. White Prosperous is not chemical weapon under the Chemical Weapons Convention CWC as it acts as an incendiary agent and not through its chemical action on life process. Next we will see Supercritical Carbon Dioxide. Recently a researcher at IIT Madras found that supercritical carbon dioxide is a good agent to flush out oil from depleting oil and gas reservoirs and super, supercritical carbon dioxide is a fluid state of carbon dioxide it's a fluid state of carbon dioxide where it is held at 
or above its critical temperature and critical pressure. It helps in simultaneous carbon dioxide sequestration and enhance the oil recovery from depleted reservoirs. Next, we'll see about tantal tantalium. Uh, researchers found that presence of tantalum in the Satilage River, sand in Punjab. The properties of this tantalum are: it's a rare metal, grey, heavy uh, ductile, and a very hard metal, and possesses a high corrosion resistance. It's almost completely immune to chemical attacks at the temperature below 150 degrees Celsius. Next, we'll see hyperloop. A Tata Steel Line Total Hyperloop signed a memorandum of agreement to join to work on development of Hyperloop technology. This Hyperloop is a proposed ultra high speed at over 700 miles an hour, a ground transportation system for passengers and cargo. This Hyperloop concept has been promoted by Musk and SpaceX and other companies too. It has three essential component. This hyperloop has three essential components. First one tube is a large sealed low pressure system or a vacuum tube. Second pod is a coach of pressurized at an atmospheric pressure that runs substantially free of air resistance. And it, uh, this tube is using magnetic propulsion. Then thermal handles pod arrivals and departures. The benefits of this hyperloop are uh, it offers very fast speed of transportation, fast speed of transportation, and which is almost twice that of the aircraft. Has a very low power consumption and low cost transportation system on long run, and immune to bad weather conditions. It has so many applications. Okay, that's all about uh, science and technology PT 365 vision. If this video helps you in any way, please subscribe, like, share and comment. Thank you.